Hello and welcome to a new episode of IB Physics Help video podcast. This time coming to you from the German city of Hamburg. This is the second episode on the topic of simple harmonic motion and some of its applications. This is my second video on simple harmonic motion. You can find the first one at ibphysicshell.net. A simple pendulum consists of a small object of mass m, called the bob of the pendulum, suspended from one end of a very light string of length l that is fixed at the other end. It is assumed that the string is not stretching as the bob swings backwards and forwards. The angular amplitude of such an oscillator is defined as the maximum angle it makes with the vertical as it swings from one side to the other. As long as the angular amplitude is kept below about 10 degrees, the entire mass of the pendulum is concentrated in the bob and the string is inextensible, its motion is of a simple harmonic type. It is relatively easy to show, and you can find this proof in any good textbook, that the period of a simple pendulum depends only on the length of the string and the acceleration due to gravity. The period is given by the formula t equals 2 pi square root of l over g, where l is the length of the pendulum and g is the gravitational acceleration. The following video shows three pendulums of the same length but different masses, 70, 27 and 9 grams. In spite of having bobs of different masses, they oscillate in sync and therefore they have the same period. There are some very small differences but they can be accounted for if we bear in mind that, amongst other things, the string used might stretch a little when the heavy bob is attached and, in addition, when the bob is very small, the actual weight of the string starts playing a more prominent role. All in all, looking at these images, we can confidently say that the period of a pendulum does not depend on the mass of the bob. A direct application of the formula introduced earlier is that a simple pendulum can be used to determine the gravitational acceleration g. As many of you might know, g represents the acceleration of any free-falling object. Free-fall refers to the motion of any object due to the gravitational pull of the Earth without any other forces like air resistance or friction acting on it. If the length of a pendulum is known and its period is measured experimentally, the formula that gives us the period of such a pendulum can be used to determine g, the acceleration due to gravity. In the experiment shown on the screen, the length of the pendulum l and the period t are determined experimentally. From here, we can calculate g. The calculated result is not too far from the accepted literature value of 9.8 meters per second squared. A more accurate result can be obtained if multiple measurements are taken and various graphing techniques are used. However, the purpose of this presentation is only to show you the general principle behind this experimental investigation. It is not my intention to give here a detailed account of how this experiment is done. Let's now turn our attention to the horizontal simple harmonic oscillator. The weight of the oscillator does not play any role here, and therefore any equation or relationship associated with the oscillator should hold regardless of the location of the oscillator. In other words, the period of an oscillator of mass m attached to a spring of spring constant k is going to be t equals 2 pi square root of m over k on Earth, on the Moon, or Mars, or anywhere else in the universe. 
The formula shown on the screen allows us to determine the mass of an oscillator if the spring constant K and its period capital T are known. They can be easily determined experimentally. This is a method of measuring the mass of an object without relying on the pull of gravity on that object. This idea was in fact used by NASA to accurately determine the mass of astronauts in the Skylab space station. This is known as experiment M172. One of the most powerful concepts in physics is the concept of energy. Energy can be described as the price we have to pay in order to get things done. Energy comes in different forms and they can change into one another when a process or some sort of transformation takes place. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It only changes from one form to another. In the case of a harmonic oscillator, there are two relevant forms of energy that we need to take into account. The first one is kinetic energy, which can be associated with any object in motion. Kinetic energy is defined as mv squared over 2, where m is the mass of the object in motion and v is its speed or velocity. The second one is the potential energy associated with the restoring force. In the case of a horizontal oscillator, the force is purely elastic. In the case of a vertical oscillator, the force is a combination of elastic and gravitational. However, in both cases, the restoring force is given by the formula F equals minus Kx and the potential energy associated with it is U equals Kx squared over 2. On a side note, this formula can be deduced if we define the potential energy U as the negative of the work done by the restoring force when bringing the oscillator from a displacement x to its equilibrium position. As the mass oscillates back and forth, the energy continuously changes from potential to kinetic and vice versa. Provided that no resistive forces like friction or air drag are acting on an oscillator, its total energy remains constant. Here, by total energy, I mean the sum of its kinetic and potential energies. Let's now have a look at the specific formulae for each of the two forms of energy. For that, let's recall the expressions for displacement and velocity as functions of time. Here, x0 is the amplitude and omega is the angular frequency. For an oscillator consisting of a mass m attached to a spring of spring constant k, omega squared equals k over m. Using the expressions on the screen, we can now express kinetic energy as mv squared over 2 or kx0 squared over 2 sine squared of omega t plus phi. Potential energy can be written as kx squared over 2 or kx0 squared over 2 cosine squared of omega t plus phi. We can now write an expression of the total energy by simply adding the two. Total energy is kx0 squared over 2 multiplied by sine squared of omega t plus phi plus cosine squared omega t plus phi. You might be familiar with the trigonometric formula sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of that angle equals 1. Using this simple formula, we can write the following expression for the total energy. E equals kx0 squared over 2. Two remarks. First, the total energy is a constant, as it does not depend on time. x0 here is the amplitude of oscillation, which is a constant for a particular oscillator. The second remark, total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is proportional to the square of its amplitude. That means that if you double the amplitude of oscillation, the total energy increases four times. The graphs on the screen show how kinetic and potential energies vary in time. A 
any point in time, the sum of the two has the same value. There is another way of visualizing the continuous change of energy from kinetic to potential and the other way around. We can plot a graph of kinetic energy and potential energy as functions of displacement x. u equals kx squared over 2. In order to write an expression of kinetic energy as a function of x, we can write kinetic energy equals total energy minus potential energy. And from here, kinetic energy equals k over 2 x0 squared minus x squared. The graphs show how kinetic and potential energies change with x. A minute ago, we derived the following expression for kinetic energy. As kinetic energy is also mv squared over 2, we can extract from here a very useful formula that connects the velocity v and displacement x. v equals plus minus omega square root of x0 squared minus x squared. Around 1610, Galileo Galilei discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter. He made careful observations of the positions of these celestial bodies over a period of time. The simulation on the screen is a simplified version of what Galileo would have observed for one of the moons, let's say Callisto. A graph of the position of Callisto in relation to Jupiter as a function of time is shown on the screen. The graph has all the characteristics of one that would describe a simple harmonic motion. What we really see here is in fact the projection of a circular motion on one of its diameters. In other words, Galileo's side view of Callisto's circular motion closely resembles simple harmonic motion. There is a remarkable connection between simple harmonic motion and circular motion. Simple harmonic motion is the projection of uniform circular motion on one of its diameters. In this demonstration, I set up an object undergoing uniform circular motion on a disc, and I use a lamp to project the motion on the wall. At the same time, the shadow of a simple pendulum is also projected on the wall. Although it is not that easy to synchronize the two, I believe that the similarity is pretty obvious. It's now time to sum up the key points in today's podcast. In the case of a simple gravitational pendulum, its period, capital T, does not depend on the mass attached to the string. The period is given by the formula T equals 2 pi square root of L of a G, where L is the length of the pendulum and G is the acceleration due to gravity. As you can see, M does not appear in the formula. Such a pendulum can be used to work out the value of the acceleration due to gravity, G. If the length of the pendulum, L, and its period, capital T, are measured experimentally, G can be calculated from the formula shown above. By measuring the period, capital T, of an oscillator consisting of a spring of known spring constant K and mass M, one can determine the mass of the oscillator using the formula T equals 2 pi square root of M over K. As an object undergoes simple harmonic motion, its kinetic energy constantly turns into potential energy and the other way around as the object changes its position. The total energy, however, remains constant. The total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is proportional to the square of its amplitude. The following formula provides a relationship between the velocity v of a harmonic oscillator and its displacement x. The projection on the horizontal or vertical axis of a uniform circular motion 
is the same as simple harmonic motion. In fact, the uniform circular motion can be seen as two simple harmonic motions operating at right angles. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.